I want to I speak a little bit on Chelsea because they've got rid of a lot of players now. It's thought that Ziyech will also follow out the door soon. He's got a very minor injury, but they still think that's going to happen. This Caicedo deal, though, why has a bid not gone in yet? What's going on? Why are Chelsea not... I'm reading some reports it's because they want 100 billion. That's Brighton. There's other reports saying it's a structure that's holding it up. Why haven't Chelsea done that business? And who else do Chelsea need, guys, to really improve their team? But on Caicedo first on, when's the mm. bid coming in? Because it feels like it's just been dragging on for ages now. Bro, from, from what Fabrizio was saying on YouTube, it sounds like he doesn't know either. Because he was like, um, <laughs> Brighton and Chelsea <laughs> have decided to take a different approach. So I think... What it is right now, it sounds like there's a lot of verbal back and forth. And Chelsea don't want a situation where we're going back and forth with bids. They just want to go in with the offer that they know Brian would accept. And I'm not really, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm actually okay with that approach, to be fair. Because last season, as you know, there were so many leaks, so many different bids, you know, different sporadic moves, different type of transfers. But now with Casado, it looks like we're take, taking a different approach again to just go in there with that bid that we know they're going to accept. So it sounds like... It's coming soon. I don't know when. I'm hoping within this week. I was hoping by Friday I would have heard something. But it does sound like we're, we're negotiating a lot back and forth. It's been ongoing. So it's not something that I think it's quite close, in all honesty. I, I've got a feeling it's quite close. But even for Victor, doesn't know when we're going to put the bet in. So I've got no idea. I'm just hoping that we get it done before the tour um, when we travel to America. Because that, that's what we're looking to do, um, hopefully. You know, because we need, to, we need to start seeing some incomings now. I know Jackson's been signed. You know, that was a good little welcome video they did for him. But... We need to say though, man, we need to bring him in. Um, and yeah, we need to start bringing in some replacements for obviously for Mason to have it as well. Does anyone see a sting in the towel here for Chelsea? Another club getting involved and taking him away from Chelsea, or is this or does it feel like a formality? What are you saying, G? Yeah, I think I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna be presumptuous here, but I have this sneaky feeling that Liverpool if that deal doesn't get done, I have a sneak. And you know, I like when it comes to Liverpool and transfers, we already know how they stay. When it comes to money, spending and all that kind of stuff, I have a sneaky feeling that they will try something if they get any type of indication that Chelsea cannot get that deal done or whatever, it, you know, whatever the case may be. I just, I don't know what it is. Like Liverpool are weird like that. And I've just, I had this thought the other day and I was like, obviously we're looking at Lavia, you know, we might get him, we might not, but I feel like, we're almost a little bit hesitant because of the fee for someone like a Lavia. Now, obviously, Caicedo will be a lot more, but he's a lot more of a complete player than a Lavia. He's a, a, at a, playing at a higher level than a Lavia. I think the club wouldn't mind paying that kind of money for someone like a Caicedo if, and only, and Liverpool only move if they see that it's a it's a feasible deal. Like, it's a deal that, you know what, he wants to come because he will he want to come. If Liverpool say, yeah, we want, he would want to come, that's, that's not going to be a problem. I just think it's more, I don't even think it's even really the fee. I think it's just more Chelsea. As Don said, you guys sound like you're kind of close. You've spoken to the guy. It just seems like you're having beef a little bit with Brighton. I don't think we'll have that kind of beef with Brighton. But again, that's just me guessing. That's just me guessing. We've actually got got a decent relation with Brighton on both sides. You know, they they took Gilmore. Yeah, you know, it sounds like you. Lampy from us. We took Graham Potter from them. We gave them, what, 20 million to take him. I mean, We've, there's been quite a few transfers between Chelsea and Brighton, so there's there's a bit of a relationship there. Um, obviously, when Stanley and that Lawrence, we got them from Brighton as well, so there is a bit of a relationship there. So I do think that things are happening. Um, I don't see another club coming in and sweeping in, especially not Liverpool. Um, nah. a lot a lot of the groundwork's been done. With Fado, in honesty, you'd be surprised, bro. You'd be surprised. Gee, do you know why I don't target. think it's our main target, man? Do you know why I don't think Liverpool get involved? In... There's only one way Liverpool get involved in this, and this is if Chelsea go and get another player that is very clearly instead of uh, Caicedo. Yeah. Because I, I yeah. feel like Liverpool, this transfer window, are trying to move stealth, move in silence, because that Jude Bellingham thing was not good for your PR, right? So I think Liverpool are looking at that, and they're going about their business very well, by the way. I'm not I'm not knocking it. But no, but the- they're, they're avoiding, and City do this with release clauses, they're avoiding negative PR. Now, if Liverpool, the one club, you don't want to be in a bidding war with is Chelsea, yeah, like, yeah, 100%. because th- so I think Liverpool would look at this, and I'm not saying you won't, but I think the only way you will get involved in this is if Chelsea have fully gone, we're not involved no more, we've backed out. Because otherwise, Liverpool would just look at this and go, This could be another one that is embarrassing if we go in this, 
and and Chelsea outbid us, it's not good PR. So I, I just think Liverpool gonna, they're no, avoiding and, them things right now. No, no, and and that, that that that's why I've, and that that is exactly why I think because I think at some point again. Tomorrow I might wake up and you guys have, you know what I mean, all of a sudden the fees agreed, blah, 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 blah. But when I'm looking at it, Terry asked the question. I'm still, I'm sitting here thinking, what is the holdup? Like, I don't get it. Like, what, what is it you're, you're waiting for? Like, I feel like Brighton have given you their valuation already. I feel like it's just obviously more from you guys who are saying, no, nah, maybe we can go a little bit lower. And Brighton are like, I feel like Brighton are in a position where, one, they don't have to sell him. They don't actually have to sell the guy. Yes, they've got a gentleman's agreement that they will sell him, but they don't have to. It's not contractually in there that they need to sell this player. So they could easily just keep him if no one wants to meet that valuation. If you guys don't want to meet the valuation outside of us, I, I mean, who else? I mean, Arsenal, maybe potentially Arsenal, another club as well. I think Manchester United, if that ownership comes in, they're another club that comes into play. But I just think that what that said, I do think that Chelsea, if things just keep dragging on and dragging, on, of course, we're only in early July. If this goes on two weeks, three weeks, get to the beginning of August and you still haven't signed him, I, I can't see you guys signing. Like, I'll be like, well, I don't see that deal ever happening. Remember, but the it, window it, still goes on until I'll the end of August. Yeah, I'll have a different no, no, point no, of view. No. But yeah, eventually different you'd different move on from your targets. Yeah, if this was so, going on into August, then I'd have a different point of view. I wouldn't be as optimistic. Yeah. But how I look at it, right, is casado has been our main target. Like I said, we tried to buy him in January um, and it, it's been it's been put out there quite early that he's going to be our main target. And the fact that we lost out on Lagarde as well, this is good. These guys are going to make sure that they're going to they're going to get this wrapped up, you know. And today is coming out that ideally we want to get it done before before we actually fly out for preseason. So if you read between the lines, that's obviously some information that's been fed to say, look, if we are getting close. We're trying to get this done before we go, you know, go preseason. So the only way I, I just don't see us walking away from this because, like I said, it's our main target. We've been chasing after this guy. He wants to move. It's not like we haven't got the money. Do you know what I mean, look how much money we've been bringing in already from a lot of these outgoings. So we just have to be patient with it. I know, I know it's a bit frustrating. I know it's taking a little bit long. Obviously, we as fans, we like to see constant updates. Do you know what I mean? But with Chelsea, like, like Fabrizio said, we're taking a different approach. So as much as I want it confirmed, I want him holding the top. I, I just know things are cooking in the back. I think it's quite close, honestly. No, Dun, this is going to be your most important signing, though. And that's the thing. Yeah. You guys need to get it done. There's no point of signing Enzo back in January for that fee that you guys paid, you paid 120 million, and then you're going to cheap out on a DM. You can't do what we did with Pogba. We signed Pogba for a record fee that year, and we gave him Matic past his prime. We gave him Ender Herrera. Good players, but not amazing. And we didn't finish the, the project. He was the project, and we didn't do it. Right now, Enzo is your project. If Terry, if Ter Terry always talks about his car, his BMW, if Terry goes to the gas station right now, and he puts regular instead of premium, be like Terry, there was no point of getting this car. You gotta, you got if you I'll get something that that's, time, I'm not if, <laughs> if you get something that's <laughs> high maintenance, then you have to maintain that high maintenance and you gotta put Caicedo next to Enzo. You gotta yeah. build that South American connection that they're gonna get. Hutch wants him, he's also South American. There's a lot of chemistry that's gonna happen in that midfield, and he's the perfect fit for Enzo. Yes, I understand they're asking for a lot, especially when you look at the current market. They see Rice is going for 105. They're seeing ridiculous fees being paid for Mount and 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 Havertz. They're like, well, we can definitely get something for Caicedo. Okay, mm -hmm. similar to what they got for Rice, West Ham got for Rice. So you're going to have to negotiate. By the end of the day, you need to get him. And you need to get him in for preseason yeah. because you can't go in next season having Enzo playing like he did with Gallagher. You, I remember watching that 4-1 game when we beat you guys with Old Trevor, and he was all sorts of frustrated because of the you, people that are playing with him in midfield. You're Give forgetting him who's Man United's team. owner, though. You're forgetting who's Man United owner you and mean, Chelsea's, Chelsea's owner. What, wait, what does that have to do with us? It's too... Because you're saying you can't do the same mistake that Man United will do. Chelsea won't make yeah. that mistake. Chelsea oh, that's what I'm saying. Don't make it. Though. Yeah, we make these mistakes. Oh, I, thought you saying they were go I thought you were saying they were going to make the mistake. That's, that's what I'm saying. You I'm, can't I'm, do that. Okay. Yeah. I, it, it is, again, I, ideally, I would have loved for Casado to, like, here we go already. But like I said, I trust this, this new ownership, right? Because, again, with Mudrick, we're quite aggressive. With Enzo, we're quite aggressive. So I trust them enough to say, look, if this is our main mm -hmm. target, and like you said, he's going to transform our midfield. You've got that South American link up. He wants to move. I just don't see us saying, oh, we're not going to pay that much. Let's walk away and go get someone else. Because re really and truly, if you look at it now, Lavia is not is, is not at that level of Casado right now. I know they're both quite young, right? Yeah. But Lavia's not at that level. So if we were to drop from a Casado to a Lavia for the sake of money, 
the fan base are gonna go up in up in arms, man. Do you know what I mean? They're gonna go up in yeah. arms. And if you guys remember that last um, you know, just before the season, after the season finished actually, they sent an open letter to the fan base and they basically said, We know we made mistakes, we're gonna try and rectify them. Do you know what I mean? Losing that on a guard say, which again which wasn't our fault. There's no point offering this guy two hundred K a week from thirteen K Euros a week. That doesn't make any sense, right? But losing that on him and then losing that on Casado. Whoa, that's 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 a that's a disaster. That's a disaster right there. Not that, that what's yeah, the is so massive though. Caicedo yeah, is so massive though. Because Caicedo is massive for all of us. All of us. He changes our team. So no, that one's gonna like, get done. That one's gonna get done. It's it's even bigger because it's not only like you're signing Caicedo. If you sign Caicedo, not only does it make a big difference in your squad, but it will give Enzo Fernandez more freedom to go forward. We saw last season when he was with Gallagher, he was like, he didn't have enough confidence in him, and he stayed back most of the time. When he was at Benfica, he would go forward. He's an attacking threat, but he didn't have that confidence to go forward at Chelsea because he was going to leave a gap behind. Yeah, he, needs with playing with Gallagher. Behind him. he needs that protection behind yeah. him. And, and like you said, like, Enzo can't speak English. And, and like I said this before, you know, Enzo... And, and Casado will be speaking Spanish to each other. People forget when you're playing football, you have to communicate. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So for me, it's a no-brainer. Everything just adds up. Everything makes sense. Everything that Safi was saying just adds to the reason as to why I don't see us walking away. I just don't see us walking away from this one at all. Is What's your formation one? next season? Sorry, sir. I, I'm, I'm actually like, what, yeah. are you, what are you trying yeah. to play? I, I think it'll be a 4 2 3 one, like what Poch is, is used to. So Enzo and... So and Kunku will be behind the striker, I guess. Yeah, Enzo, Enzo and Caicedo playing behind Nkunku is, yeah. is filthy. That I'm, yeah. I'm going to be very honest with you. That is filthy. Wait and this is why I'm saying one. you have to do that. Because you yeah. get that guy, um, you get, get Caicedo, you unlock these two people next to him. Enzo gets his free reign, and Nkunku doesn't have to worry about playing a little bit higher than, than the other two midfielders. You yeah. have to yeah. go ahead and do that. There's another... Obviously, we've, we've had G and... Uh, G thinks that maybe Liverpool come in, be a sting in the towel in relation to... Caicedo, but...